the scientific evidence for lucid dreaming uh, was basically pioneered by, by two gentlemen, uh, Keith Heron at the University of Hall in England and uh, Stephen LeBurge uh, a few years later at Stanford University. Uh, basically, both of them figured out the same mechanism to scientifically prove something that had been talked about for centuries. The Buddhists have been talking about lucid dreaming or becoming consciously aware of the dream state uh, since basically the 8th eighth, eighth century. And parapsychologists have been talking about it for hundreds of years. But these gentlemen proved it. And this is how they proved it. They thought that when you're dreaming, your body is basically paralyzed or functionally paralyzed, but you still have rapid eye movement. So they wondered, when you're consciously aware in the dream state, can you signal that you're consciously aware by moving your eyes in a predetermined pattern? And uh, this is some uh, work that uh, Stephen LeBurge has, has done. The uh, two uh, indices here, the left eye and the right eye, you can see here at the beginning, the person is not dreaming. There's no eye movement. Then all of a sudden, they begin to dream. And uh, here's where they signal. So that's what they did. They would move their eyes left to right four times in a predetermined signal to consciously announce to the person who's watching this little polygraph, hey, I'm consciously aware in here. And, and uh, Keith Hearn, the, the first person to see this, he said at that moment, it was philosophically and scientifically mind-blowing. So a lot of the focus of lucid dreaming research has been on the brain activity while lucid. Uh, when you're dreaming, the older part of your brain is active, but when you become consciously aware, all of a sudden that prefrontal cortex begins to light up. And so there's a lot of interesting brain activity uh, experiments. Also, they've done physiological responses to lucidly dreamt actions. Uh, a good friend of mine was the first woman to lucidly signal that she is consciously aware and then have an orgasm uh, as they were monitor monitoring her. And then, then they could, they could uh, take the lucidly dreamt orgasm and compare it to a physiological normal waking state orgasm and, and, and see how, com com compare, how they compared. And, and actually, they're very, very close. Uh, but in a lucid dream, normally it happens even faster than it might in, a, uh, <laughs> in the waking world. And then there's various induction techniques, uh, this Nova Dreamer that flashes in your eyes when it recognizes REM, and uh, you use that as a cue to become consciously aware. The personality characteristics of lucid dreamers, the prevalence in the population. Probably the most functional way is uh, using uh, lucidity in nightmare treatment uh, with people with post-traumatic stress disorder. But in all of that, you don't see the revolutionary potential. Um, I taught myself how to lucid dream back in 1975 when I was a junior in high school. And so I did it six years before the proof appeared. And, and it was very strange. I'd tell my friends, hey, I'm becoming consciously aware in the dream state. Oh, you're just having a dream about a dream. Oh, you can't become conscious in the unconscious. But, but I've been doing this for, for 33 years. And, and, and so we all know that in normal dreaming, uh, people always mention precognitive dreams and telepathic and clairvoyant dreams, visitation dreams from the deceased, healing dreams, numinous dreams. But it occurred to me, when consciously aware or lucid, why not seek out that kind of information? Instead of waiting for that to happen, which it just normally spontaneously happens in our normal dreams, when you're consciously aware, you can seek it out. So, so this is really uh, some of the potential for mind-expanding uh, work in the field of lucid dreaming. Uh, you can use lucid dreaming, that state, to seek telepathic clairvoyant information. And, and in my book, um, I have chapters on seeking telepathic and clairvoyant information, seeking precognitive, forward-looking information, another chapter on interacting with the deceased uh, dream figures in the lucid dreams. And so I think I'm the first one who's really suggested that there's enough anecdotes out there that we could really take this seriously. So, so for example, here's, here's a college student uh, wrote me and he said, it sounds like you believe that um, you can get unknown information when you're consciously aware. And I said, sure, that's what I believe, but you're a good lucid dreamer. You just figure it out for yourself. Go, go and do an experiment. So what he did, he went down the dorm hall and found a young woman who was also a lucid dreamer. And, and they started talking about it, and she, she 
gave him a challenge. When you become consciously aware the next time, come and find me and find the bizarre freckle on my back. So the, the first time the guy had a lucid dream, uh, he starts going down the hallway of the dorm, but he gets stopped. You know, there's people come and are yelling at him and all this kind of stuff, and, and, and it falls apart. But the second time he becomes consciously aware in the dream state, he thinks, why should I go to her? I'll just have her come to me. So, 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 so all of a sudden, here she appears at his doorstep and comes in, and she turns around and shows him the bizarre freckle. And the thing that surprised him was the bizarre freckle was not along her side, which he had kind of thought she had hinted at, but was right above her rump. And that really shocked him in the lucid dream. He didn't expect that at all. So he wakes up three hours later, goes knocks on her door, says, hey, I found your bizarre freckle in a lucid dream. He put his finger right above her rump. She pulls up her shirt, and there's the bizarre freckle right under, right under his finger. So this really blew this kid's mind. But I want to tell you, that's just one example of, of what, what you can do when you're consciously aware in the dream state. At the uh, Association for the Study of Dreams, every year we have a dream telepathy contest, which is something that a former professor here at the University of Virginia, Charlottesville, uh, Robert Van de Castle, got started. Uh, they did uh, pioneering work on dream telepathy, got the first NIH grant on telepathy. But every year we, we have a dream telepathy contest. And now what's happening is the lucid dreamers are becoming consciously aware. They're going and finding the telepathic sender, find out what they're sending, and then they wake up with it. And in the morning, uh, they're winning the contest. But it makes you wonder, could this also prove some of Carl Jung's ideas? like the collective unconscious or more new age ideas like universal mind or the meta web or the matrix. Uh, for myself personally, um, I became very interested in precognitive lucid dreams because precognition was something that uh, got me attracted to dreaming to begin with. The first time uh, I did it was at the request of a friend of mine, Linda Maguillon, who wrote the book uh, Mutual Dreaming. And she asked me to get precognitive information. So I became consciously aware in a lucid dream, and I thought, well, how do I get precognitive information when I'm cognating now? <laughs> and, and so I had this little philosophical crisis in the lucid dream. So when I woke up, I realized, oh, I got to project it out from me. I got to find it. So uh, I began just doing the experiments. I'd see a friend in a lucid dream, and I'd say, a year from now, where are you going to be living? Because this friend had been talking about moving away. Or a year from now, are you going to be married? Because he's involved with a uh, uh, a young woman very seriously. And in both of the cases, the answers were correct. I had to wait a year to get the, the, to see the results, but, but they were correct. And as I did it more and more often, it surprised me how, how the answers were just correct repeatedly. So then one time a friend said, well, it seems like I was getting quite good with precognition and lucid dreams, so why don't I get the uh, lottery numbers of the... Uh, <laughs> And my friend said that he had tried it once. He had tried to get the Powerball numbers. But here's what happened to him. He became consciously aware. He projected that the information would appear in the book that he opens. So he sees two sets, or, or two numbers, six sets of two numbers. And he sat there trying to memorize them. And he memorizes it, memorizes it, memorizes it. Then he tells himself to wake up. And he said he woke up. He started writing it down in his dream journal. He got the first three sets exactly but then the memory problem occurred and he could not remember, you know, it, and so what happened the next day when the uh, Powerball was announced, he did get the first three sets exactly right, but the next three sets he had transposed the numbers incorrectly. So he told me to do the Iowa Pick 3 lottery. And just to be real quick, this is what happened. Became consciously aware, remembered, oh yeah, I wanted to get that Iowa Pick 3 lottery number for this weekend. All of a sudden, I look in my hand and I have a wheel of fortune like that, but, but without any numbers on it. And so at first I look at it and I see just one number, the number eight. I think, okay, well that, that must be the number. I, I hadn't even really formally asked the question to the dream awareness, hey, I want to get the Iowa Pick 3 lottery number. So, so the first number I see is eight. I look away and then I look back down and now I see nothing on that wheel of fortune. And that really confused me. I thought, nothing, well that's weird. Then I look away and I look back down and I see eight again. And so now I feel really confused because I'd already seen eight before. Why am I seeing this again? And so, so now I felt really confused and I, I looked back at it one time and, and, and it, it said one. And then I thought I should just wake up and write this down. So I woke up and I thought, well, maybe that second eight was really a three. I mean, that's what your mind starts to do. You start to interpret the data that you picked up. And so I thought, well, may, maybe it's eight, three, one. But as it turned out, the pick three lottery for that uh, period that day was 8-3-1. Uh, 